Sure, you could be a waitress, a bartender, do promo jobs, but at the end of the day, you're an actor, you're a performer, and you still want to be on set, don't you? You've come to the right video because today we're going to talk about actor survival jobs, in specific, ones that are paid. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, my name is Olivia Gudanitz and welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about actor survival jobs that are going to keep you in the film industry if you're an actor but not necessarily acting so you're still doing your thing even when you're not the lead actor. That's how I've been able to make a living for the past decade so when I'm not acting I'm still on set to some capacity, I'm still networking and that's where we want you to be. So what do you do for a living? My best, Tom. I do my best, okay? That's what I do. The goal here, my actors, is to have multiple streams of income. Why? If you're not acting, you're still gonna be able to pay the bills. You wanna go shopping, and I never want you to be like, oh, I can't this month because I didn't book a gig. We're not gonna go there. We have large streams of money and income coming to us at all times. Say it with me. Number one, you have not considered background work. I talk about this all the time. It's a great job to have all year round. You need a background agent for that specifically that is separate from principal casting. Some principal agencies have a background department. I'll leave it to your discretion. I personally wouldn't sign with an agency like that because they have way too much going on and I want them to focus on me as a principal actor, not be sending a background and principal acting. So I keep them completely separate. In the background world, you can have multiple agents. You can say yes the night before. You can go out to work the next day and get a paycheck. I also have a separate video on how to become a background extra, which will break it down for you a little more. Learn how professional film sets operate. See what background roles they are stereotyping you as, because that might be similar to what you'd be going out as a principal actor. Number two, it's called standing in. Essentially, that is when you are similar proportions of height, hair color, physical aspects to one of the lead actors and they need stand-ins on set, especially the camera department, to work out the scenes with them. Let's say I'm the lead actress, I come in, I sit down on this lovely sofa, I pretend to be talking to my love interest here, Diego, I lean over like this, I grab this pillow and I hold it like this, and then I get up and leave. What a stand-in does is when the lead actress goes to hair and makeup and to get ready, the stand-in does those actions for the camera team so the camera team can sort of practice what's happening. The lighting can be adjusted, so if I'm gonna lean in, we'll they'll need a light over here because otherwise there's nothing here it'll be dark that's what a stand-in does they usually have more of a commitment on set so you'll be out there for a month two months I've done gigs where they've lasted years so it all depends how available and accessible you want to be to that production you have to have a stand-in resume to get in you can ask your background agent how to do that or I can make a separate video on that so let me know but I have to preface that you do need to be a union actor. It's just they want people with experience, they don't wanna be, you know, have people that are totally green, which means new to the industry, taking on a higher role. If you wanna become a stand-in, start doing background work, ask around, tell your background agent you want it, you're interested in that, and then see where it takes you. Number three for actor survival jobs, we are on a roll. Again, like a stand-in, you have to have similar characteristics. When you are a stand-in, sometimes you can become a photo double as well. If the lead actor is running through the forest and she keeps running, running, and the lead actress either has to get ready for the next scene or she doesn't want to do that, they'll hire a photo double let's say it's me, and I will put on her costume and I'll be the one running deep in the forest while they're recording it, pretending I'm her. Or sometimes, you know, I've done photo double gigs where someone's on their phone and they're just swiping through and it's a phone insert and they'll use my hands for that. That's still considered photo doubling. That's within the background world, the same thing as being an extra or a stand-in. You can ask your background agent on how to submit for that. If you get that opportunity, it is so cool and it's probably the closest thing to being an actor because they treat you just like the actor because they want it to look superb. 
number four. I'm just gonna stick to the background world because I've gotten a lot of income through that way. If you become known in the industry and you kind of start networking with the background casting directors, you can either become a background casting associate, so you can be signing people in, other background performers when you're coming on shows, or become a child wrangler. The more you learn about the industry, you will see little opportunities pop up. You're on set, you may not be acting, but you are there. And people will ask, hey, are you an actor? That's where the networking comes in. That's when if someone's sick, hey, can you cover me next week to do this and this? It's just, you know, when things are slow, you have options and I'm just here to present them to you. Another great gig to have is to be a reader for principal casting directors when they have their auditions. And they want you to sign on for like, let's say minimum six months or one year. But if you're in one of those phases in your life where you're like, oh, I don't know why I'm not booking. I wonder what's missing. Maybe I just want a break from acting. If you see one of these postings, which I usually see on Facebook, through casting directors, so make sure you're networking, either adding them or if they have workshops or Facebook groups like it. They could be posting anywhere. So first of all, you have to be aware of who the casting directors are in your city. And if you don't know who those are, that's your homework for the day. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is to be front desk or reception at an acting agency. What better way to see how the industry works on a principal acting level than being involved, front office, head office, however you want to call it. So whether it's at a studio, an agency, depending where you live, send out an application. Maybe you can start off there. Say in a year, I'll learn how, to, how this industry works and then I'll make a judgment call if I want to be an actor or go back to acting or whatever your circumstance is at that point. Last but not least, you know I can't let you go without a bonus tip, right? If you want to look up the website weaudition.com, you can become a reader for people from the comfort of your own home. So if you are somebody that wants to read for people while they have their virtual auditions or you have your Zoom auditions, however that's going to go, you can go to weaudition.com. You can set your rates. It's worth looking into. If you're still confused, still need help, check out my new actor's workbook. Get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me. You can reach me at oliviagmedia.com. I host calls every Saturday. I'm your girl. I'm here to answer that. Thank you so much for being here. If you love this video, I'm just giving you a quick taste. There are a lot more actor survival job ideas in my new actor's workbook part two, which you can get. I'll leave a link in the description box and also down below.